Good afternoon, everyone, and you're welcome to another episode of Chit Chatting with UCAP. Um, if we could just hold on for a few minutes while we wait for some other people to join us. So let's just hold on, please. All right, all right, so let's start. Good afternoon again, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you for logging in, joining this session. This is Chit Chatting with UCAP, and my name is Louis Akboveso. I'm your host for today. I'm a technical officer at United Capital PLC Southern Region. So just a bit about United Capital PLC. We are your leading investment banking firm the only quoted firm on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. And we have uh, our five businesses that cater to all your financial needs. We have our trustees business, we have our securities business, investment banking, asset management, and consumer finance. Uh, if you want to know a little bit more about us, you could go to www.unitedcapitalplcgroup.com. 
or you could go to our digital investment platform www.investnow.ng so we also have an app on ios and on android you could download that and for any information that you would require you would be provided so today we have um our guest bemishola adenikon she is the hr manager here at united capital bemi you're welcome to the show thank you so very much for joining us today Bemi, please, your, I think your mic is, is on me. Thanks, Louis. Nice to be here. Nice to be here. You're shining. We're super ex- I'm super excited to see you. I'm excited That's nice. to be here. Trust me. Okay. <laughs> That's nice. That's nice. So our, our, what, we, what we're going to be discussing for today is a job seeker's guide to finding employment post-COVID. You know, okay. So a lot of people will believe that COVID has, uh, the worst of it has come and gone. Right? So and it has changed every single landscape, both from all across, across every single industry, right? So if we are talking about both finance, religion, every single thing, COVID has changed it. So we're going to be talking about today, just personally today, a job, speak, a job seeker's guide to finding employment after COVID. So we're going to be taking some questions and um, we'll get our viewers to also contribute. And I think it's going to be an excellent session. I'm, I'm looking forward excited. to it. Right. So, I mean, with your permission, let's let's quickly get yes, into... Yes, please, by all means, let's okay. start. Okay, fantastic. So, um, our first question here. So, for many years, there has continued to be a spike in the level of unemployment as regards the Nigerian space, right? So, how do you think the advent of COVID affected this spike in unemployment in Nigeria today? Okay, so I'll just give um, some data, you know, from the National Bureau of Statistics so we can put things in clearer perspective. So the unemployment rate, the current unemployment rate as at Q2 2020 is 27.1. And this is um, a far cry from what was, from what we had in 2018, which was 23. Um, So we don't have the current data, um, you know, I mean, post COVID, but from all indications, you know, and quite frankly, the advent of the COVID pandemic has deepened the unemployment numbers and projections by, you know, astronomical proportions. So we already had the issue of unemployment, um, you know. However, this global pandemic has made it worse. You know, we see large brands, large organizations, and companies shutting down their operations due to, you know, COVID-19 all around the world, um, and not to even mention Nigeria thereby causing lots of job cuts, um, lots of contract losses, you know, suppliers are not supplying as they used to. And so, you know, all these have contributed or they definitely will contribute to the unemployment um, rates in Nigeria. And apart from this, you know, some of our youth who were engaged in um, entrepreneurial activities, you know, they embarked on some sort of self-sustaining businesses, you know, the caterers here, the buying and selling things, you know, and it, it, it's, it was actually thriving for them before the, the COVID pandemic. However, we've seen instances where these entrepreneurs have had to close business. They've had no choice but to shut down operations, close businesses, and this would also affect the unemployment rates and underemployment rates um, in Nigeria. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bemi. So, in fact, in a nutshell, what you're saying is that it's it has gotten a bit worse. It well, has it's not looking good. Worse. Yes, yes, it's not looking good um, because you know most organizations have had to one way or the other um, make some adjustments as a result of COVID. Some organizations have had to lay off um, some of their employees. You, you can imagine in maybe hotels where they have little or no um, income. You know they've had to make you know really huge cuts as regards to their job. So yes, it's it's not looking very good um, with regards to um, unemployment rates. Wow, okay, thank you very much. So looking a bit bleak at the moment. Um, okay, that's, that's that. thank you very much, Bemi, for that. Okay, so let's quickly go to our next one here. Can you give a bit of insights as to which particular industries actually thrived during this period? and maybe those that didn't. So I know that you've already mentioned the hotels. So the hotels took like a heavy hit already. You've mentioned that. 
But if you can say, if you can give us a bit of insight to, so we have the COVID winners, those mm. that won as a result of COVID, those that the coming of COVID, despite the fact that like it was hurtful to life, to business on a general note, they were sure winning. Yeah. They were sure winning. So yeah. if we could get um, a few of some of those industries that actually benefited from the onset of this COVID. Okay, that's a very good question, Louis. Um, you know, some of these industries, um, off the top of my head, I would say the medical industry. So yes, they have no doubt been um, at the forefront of battling this pandemic. They've, you know, risked their lives and everything to fight this pandemic. So yes, it's very risky. However, the rewards are also um, significant. So um, we have people in the medical field, you know, not only treating COVID patients, but also treating um, patients with ailments that have been caused by, you know, sedentary lifestyles that people have had to live as a result of COVID, you know, the lockdown for months, you know, people exactly. would, you know, get, you know, not even only physical or body um, ailments, but also me mental ailments as well. So I would say that the medical field is definitely a winner. Um, you would find situations where people are losing their jobs, but doctors and nurses are, I mean, they're actually in high demand at this point in time. So the medical field is definitely a winner. Also the um, agriculture sector or, you know, with more emphasis on the um, food processing or agro-processing um, sector. So everybody's at home, everybody's eating, you know, there's a lot more demand for food. Exactly. So, yeah, so people, so the, I would say that that sector is, is, is definitely a hit, um, you know, and also job seekers should not necessarily restrict themselves to, um, you know, shut and tie um, white collar jobs, but also be open to opportunities that arise in, in any of these sectors. Um, also the um, e-commerce um, logistics um, sector as well is, is really thriving. So because people are not able to meet physically, stores cannot physically open their shops, they would need um, logistics persons to help them pass their goods across in order to survive. And you know, this came out as a result of, as a survival <laughs> tactic, as a result of people trying to survive even in the midst of COVID. And so we've seen a rise in the, in the demand and the need for e-commerce and logistics um, persons. And finally, I would say, I would say that the telecoms industry, I can't tell you how much I have spent on um, phone calls, you know, on data, you know, so they have definitely thrived during this period. And so, um, yeah, those are definitely the, the big winners, um, like you said, during this, this pandemic. And I had already mentioned the um, hospitality um, industry that was, you know, greatly hit. Yeah, so that's one of the industries that, that was affected negatively. Right. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, in fact, for people that because of the lockdown, right, you know, we, uh, on a lighter note, we're hearing issues of maybe people that would eat only once a day, you know, you just <laughs> get up in the morning, eat, go to work, and then till like the next day. And now they're eating four times a day. So, okay. if you're buying one bag of rice for the year before. I'll yeah, tell you, you yeah, buy now. two, three. Yes. You know <laughs> it's so, that, that's a nice one. And I really love the point you made about like the doctors as well. They are risking a whole lot, right, to be out there in the forefront, uh, you know, but even in investments, the higher your risk, the higher your reward. Higher reward um, yeah. So I think that's a fantastic one. Thank you very much, Bemi. So let's quickly go to the next one. Currently, the mandatory lockdown has been significantly eased up, you know, with some companies already working at full capacity, you know, what is the current employment landscape like? Okay, so are companies still recuperating from their losses, you know, or are there like real recruitment opportunities out there? So what would you say the current um, employment landscape is, is currently like? Okay. Okay, so I would say that there are always opportunities. It depends on where you're looking and how you are looking at it. So yes, COVID has brought about, you know, so much sadness for people who have lost their lives. But at the, at, the, at the same time, I would dare say that there have been opportunities for people also within the same pandemic. So um, some organizations have resumed due to the ease of lockdown. They have resumed operations um, and hopefully uh, following precautionary measures. Um, and so some roles have also um, been made 
um, open for for recruitment. So I remember even in the thick of of COVID, United Capital, you know, we actually recruited a couple of people. So the opportunity is always there. However, it may not be as um, I mean, organizations will not may not be recruiting in large proportions as they were before. They may want to just weather the storm and just see how things pan out before they begin to recruit. And also it would give an uh, opportunity to the um, employers to sort of do an, an analysis or an over, you know, have an overview exactly. of roles that they need, roles that they don't need, roles that, you know, you know, so it's just, they would just need some time to, to um, see how things turn out. Exactly. So I would just say that, exactly. yeah, job, job seekers should, should be prepared, you know, for the future. They, they should be prepared for whatever opportunity arises. So they, they, people say um, opportunity meets preparedness. So you won't say because now nobody's recruiting, you won't prepare yourself. No, there are certain steps which I believe we'll discuss further down um, during in the course of this um, chat. There are steps that we should take as job seekers to ensure that we're well positioned for whatever opportunities arise in due course. Fantastic, fantastic. So for like the job seekers out there, um, just the fact that COVID happened doesn't really mean that opportunities have completely dispersed, mm -hmm. right? So we still have some, and like you, found, you mentioned, um, United Capital still hired during the period, right? So it's, I think it's, it's an excellent one. So a job seeker out there, let your preparedness meet the opportunity that is coming. Mm. So it's, it's a fantastic one. Thank you very much, Bimi. So let's quickly go to the next question here. So one could see, Bimi, that mm -hmm. COVID-19 has opened the eyes of many industries to their inherent vulnerabilities, right? And has provided room for an alternative mode of operation based off of the vulnerabilities that they've discovered or noticed, right? So how would you say that this has affected recruitment? So, so they've, COVID has happened. They've seen, ah, these are the problems. These are some of the places that we were losing slash gaining money or services or whatever it is from, you know? And then as a result, they've discovered an alternative mode of operation that will help them save on what it is, on what it is that they were losing previously. Mm -hmm. How would you say that this has affected recruitment in particular? Okay. Um, so, like I said, yes, organizations are sort of recalibrating and like you, you buttressed as well, they are trying to see where they can. So in the same vein, um, with regards to recruitment, you know, it's not going to be business as usual. So organizations who before would be using their paper, um, you know, manual uh, means of recruiting right now, they'll be looking at probably um, going through your social media handles to see um, your fit for the organization. So that's another recruitment strategy, you know, using social media to drive the organizational um, recruitment strategy. So as a job seeker, you, you want to be sure that you do not post um, things that are, um, would I say politically incorrect? you know, um, post on your, on your social handles. You want, to, um, you want to portray that you are a professional. You want to portray that, you know, who, whichever organization employs you um, is, is making a good decision and they can see it through your posts. So using the social media is definitely um, um, one area. Also, I would say um, acquiring skills like team, team, um, teamwork, team management skills, um, so you would find that, you know, during this era as well, organizations would be open to um, working from home, having policies where um, some of the employees can work from home and also have employees who are in different countries, you know, and are not in the same vicinity as you. So you should be able to manage um, whatever relationship exists with um, employees all across the world and not just Nigeria. So I've seen instances where in a team, one team member is from Niger is working in Nigeria remotely. Another team member is working in the US or Paris, you know, different countries. So you should be able to work as a team in order to achieve the objectives of the organization. And also in the same vein, I would say communication skills. Not everybody knows how to communicate. So you will find out that um, in people's CVs, they will say well, they have management skills, people management skills, teamwork. But in, in actual fact, they don't really know how to communicate in order to 
get a result. You know, there's something called effective communication. It's a two-way street. It's not just one person who is just, you know, doing the talking. So though that also is a skill that I, I would strongly recommend that um, job seekers um, build, you know, during this period. And also um, familiarizing um, oneself with whatever app. So I would say that you should um, download apps like um, Zoom, uh, Microsoft Teams, or even um, um, Skype for Business. So these are apps that recruiters are currently using to recruit. Um, and you don't want to be caught in a situation where you are still struggling with the app. You don't really know how it's working, where to or mute, you know. So you want to familiarize, familiarize yourself with these apps so that you are not caught unawares, you know. So um, I would say that those are some, um, some strategies that job seekers can adopt during these times as regards um, recruitment or recruitment strategy of organizations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bemi. You know, so while you were talking about the social media um, aspect, I was just fondly remembering a comment that I read off Twitter a couple of months back. The internet never forgets, is what they say. So you see, you think you've blown, right? And then somebody will just go to 1991 and just dig something and come out, you know, it's... So even if you're not actively looking for a job, right, I, I believe you should mind what you post about yourself, your family, your friends, out there on social media it's, it's a plus as well so take advantage of the social and you, you said rightly that a lot of companies are now looking at hiring well maybe not hiring but like doing sort of like a background check right yeah. who is this yeah. person like when the person is just with his phone in his room or her phone in it so that gives you like some Definitely. sort of insights you know yeah. behind the glorified english Latin cv you know, so that's that's an excellent one. Thank you so very much. The apps also super super important, mm. super important. I, we cannot even overemphasize that, right? So, um, let's let's take another question here. So, getting laid off from a job could be a determinant for the future employers. Is this still the case in the wake of COVID nineteen, or are companies more sympathetic in such situations? So, if when, when an employee gets laid off from a job, right? Do you think that right now, because of COVID, you know, companies are a little more sympathetic to um, laying off or firing or just give us a bit of insight on your feelings as regards this? Okay. Um, so you're very right. I mean, in the past, you know, people who were made redundant or terminated or their appointments terminated, they may find it a bit difficult to get back into um, the workforce or the, you know, the, the working um, population. Um, and so, you know, that was then, but now, now this pandemic, I, I mean, it, I don't think impacts of the pandemic can be overemphasized because the whole world, you know, is aware of, of, of you know, the impact of COVID. So if somebody who was laid off you know, and he's applying for another job and explains that, oh, you know, his job was cut because, his or her job was cut because of the um, impact of COVID. COVID. Definitely recruiters will be very um, understanding and sympathetic and they will not use it as a yardstick or as a measure of the person's capabilities. You know, so I would say that, yes, um, recruiters are more sympathetic to um, people's um, situations, you know, as a result of COVID. But with them being sympathetic, I would add that, you know, the honesty um, lies with the job seeker to demonstrate or portray that they are able to, I mean, that they have the right skills, knowledge and attributes for that job that they're um, applying for. So yes, there's the, the, the role of sympathy, but you know, the, the job seeker also that, you know, I was laid off as a result of COVID and nothing more, you know, because some people, even though they may, they may have been poorly performed, I mean, they may have performed poorly in their jobs, they would just blame it on COVID, you know, but that's why I say that the, the job seeker also has to show that, you know, he or she can actually do the job and has the right skill sets, the right um, knowledge, the right qualifications and the right attributes to do the job. Fantastic. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a lot of learning points. I'm getting a lot of learning points. So anybody that wants to use COVID to cover up their... <laughs> 
you know so what what you said was really was really important you know so yes the recruiter is going to be sympathetic you know but then the person has to prove that if not for covid by now i would have been in so so place it's just covid that is making me yell that's making me to be here so so nice thank you very much thank you very much so um i don't know if our viewers are enjoying this conversation as much as i am you know, I think we should all see how we could follow. First of all, you could start by subscribing to the YouTube channel. So the YouTube, you're already on the YouTube channel right yeah. now, right? So you could subscribe to it. And then you could follow us on social as well. We are social on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. We are United Capital PLC, right? United Capital PLC. And then on Twitter, we are at United Cap, okay? At United Cap. So we are verified across all platforms. Um, if you do not see the blue tick or the verification tick, please, please, that's not us, please. Thank you very, very much for staying with us so far. And Bemi, please, let's, con let's proceed. Um, okay. Some more questions so that we can okay. have a bit more of your, your experience. You're really giving it to us this afternoon. Okay. So, <laughs> that's fine, okay. So what are some innovative approaches for job seekers to find and prepare for employment post COVID, right? So something innovative, something that can catch the eye of the recruiter, you know, now that everything has shifted, we are now in sort of like a new normal. So mm -hmm. applications should also switch. So what are some of these innovative approaches you would say that um, somebody that is looking for a job right now on this channel can immediately leverage to put him or her ahead in their next job application? Okay. Um, first of all, the very first thing I would say is your CV has to, has to be um, updated and should show, um, literally show the recruiter what they want to see. So it should have, you know, things like your contact details, your educational um, ex um, records and your experience. So I've seen some CVs where there's no contact details. So even if you want to call the person or invite the person for an interview, there's, there's no way you can do that. So you even have to ensure that your email is there because these times, you know, employers are using um, um, emails or, I mean, they're using virtual means for their um, recruitment. So yes, it may get to a level where you may have to come in for a physical interview, but, you know, for the first few interviews, which is why I had said we should download um apps you know for that may be used for the recruitment so first of all definitely your cv you know have everything up to date that's your starting point that's the contact that you have um with the recruiter that's the first thing the recruiter says before they see you before they even hear you out to um explain or you know detail what you have to offer so that's one two your linkedin profile um so as job seekers, and they may have some experience, they may not have experience, but whatever the case is, um, they, they would want to um, dis show that they have, um, that they are relevant in their fields. So yes, you may, I, I know we did, um, on this chit chat as well, there was a session where we had um, someone come talk to us about LinkedIn and how to, how to position yourself and position your profile on LinkedIn. So it's very, exactly. very important that exactly. you should you should um position i'll call it position yourself um so that when recruiters come knocking they see um you they see what they what they want to see um so if you if you can't write write-ups um probably because you don't have the um relevant years of experience you may do some research and you know post written um material and also definitely reference the material but post the material so it's on i mean there's a trend that okay this person is relevant in this particular field so yes your linkedin profile um also so physical regards to interviews so yes the interviews may they're not physical interviews so you would want to um be prepared for the virtual interview now, behind me, you can see the United Capital background, right? Um, there was an interview I had where the candidate had a completely lewd picture as, as, as the background, you know, which was, I, I found that, that, in fact, even before the person opened um, their mouth, it was completely off-putting. 
So you should pre be prepared for the interview. Ensure that, okay, you have a nice, proper background, you know, um, or a plain background. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but just something that doesn't, it's not too so conflicting or scattered or all over the place. So that's definitely that. Um, so I had talked about downloading the apps. Yes, that's already noted. And also keep in touch with your networks. And if you aren't any, if you're not a member of any network or you know professional <laughs> network, you can always um, look for some on LinkedIn and join so that if there are any um, opportunities, you'll definitely be you know top of mind for, I mean, from these networks. So there's so many people have gotten jobs from their networks. So this person, I'm, you know, I'm looking for a job. Or, and before you know it's okay, I know someone who knows someone who knows someone and you know, the networking work. Um, so also I would say be open to smaller firms, you know, some job seekers are looking for the shells and the NLPCs, well, maybe not, but you know, looking out for big organizations. However, you can start small and gather as much experience as you can from those smaller organizations. And you find out that in a smaller organization, as a junior person, you're doing the work of a manager, you're doing the work of a more experienced person. So by the time you leave there for a bigger organization, you are well positioned and you know you have the experience and the exposure that you need to carry out the job. Um, so I would just also, lastly, I would say um, upskill and reskill. The only thing constant in this world is change. So yes, you have a BSc in accounting, but you can always, look for other courses that um, speak to you as a person and maybe courses that you feel may be relevant to you in future and then go for, you know, go for courses. There are so many courses on Coursera, on Udemy, and they're quite affordable. They're always doing sales. So you can always, you know, do some of these courses and put um, the certification or the name of the course on your CV so that it shows that you're constantly um, reinventing yourself. You're constantly updating yourself. Organizations don't want people who would just come and be stagnant. They want people who would come and, you know, work to push the vision of the organization. People who are dynamic, you know, in, in, in getting things done. So that's definitely it. Um, some schools of thought would say, um, you know, specialization, there's no need to specialize in any, any given field. Um, and I, I tend to agree with that because um, some firms are looking for people who can double hats. So gone are the days where they'll say oh, they're just looking for, for one finance person. No, they will want a finance person and maybe an, an, um, a reconciliation or, you know, roles that, so for instance, HR, you know, organizations will look for a HR person and who can also do admin as well. So it's, it's also very important for you to not rest on your oars. Don't just say, okay, I have my BSc, I have my, my qualification, I'm not doing it again, I'm not reading it again, no. You need to reinvent, upskill and reskill. So I would say, I know that's quite a handful, but I'll say that those are some tips that I would, I would give anytime, any day to anyone who is looking for a job. No, maybe a very useful handful, you know, if you ask me. I mean, I've been taking notes. I'm sure I'm not the only one, um, especially like with the Coursera and Udemy courses, right? So continue to update your CV. And, you know, you mentioned something super interesting, you know. So you've been, you've been asking God to call you. Baba, when will you call me so that something can happen? And he's not having your phone number. How exactly is it going to happen? Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's important, right? While you're updating with your courses and everything, you need to update your contact details your so number. that you can get called. Yeah. For goodness sake, you know? so it's, it's, it's usually the little things, honestly speaking. It's usually the little things. So okay. thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. I'm 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 overflowing with value as I am now. I feel like I'm I'm get, I'm learning something here, honestly. So so let's, let's quickly go to the next one here. Okay. So can you give us tips or like uh, your tips? Can you give us some tips on some approaches that we should avoid when garnering the attention of recruiters and hiring managers? So everything that we should not do when we're trying to get the attention of a recruiter. So just a bit of some tips. See, you've told us what to do. You've told mm. us how to update our CV, what social media platforms to be on. Um, you've also told us a bit of what we shouldn't do as regards the interesting backdrop. 
um, experience that you had. So, so give us more tips on what we should avoid as we regards this particular topic. Okay, um, so I would say don't spam the emails of your um, proposed employer or the company that you want to go into. I mean, we've seen instances where people will send emails and just keep sending those mails and keep sending. Maybe they're hoping for, I don't know what they're hoping for really, but don't spam. You know, you can send your emails, um, you send a couple of emails. And also in those emails, try to um, add value, try to put in things that value that you feel you can add to the organization. And yes, there have been instances where uh, we would just see unsolicited emails from some random person, but the way the person has drafted that email is superb, you know, and you feel like, oh, okay, let's, let's have a chat. Let's, you know, let's have an exploratory conversation. So don't, number one, don't spam the emails of your, but some people even send emails to the CEO. They will go to LinkedIn and get the name of the CEO or some top person and just keep pushing emails and so those those are very off-putting. They're not very. I mean, you're not you're not helping your matter you know, by doing that. So I would say definitely don't do that. Um, so also, you know, if um, an organization has different posts for different roles, so for instance, an HR role, a finance role, I wouldn't advise that the job seeker uh, applies for all the jobs because I have seen instances where they apply for literally all the jobs that you know the organization puts out which shows that they're not they don't really have anything so they just want a job really yeah they're not specialized or something exactly so. exactly so um but i would say if if maybe you see an organization who is um recruiting for the role of an hrbp for example i use hr because i mean that's my field um, recruiting for the role of an HR business partner um, and an HR generalist and maybe a senior HR. So yes, you can apply for those because I mean, they're all related, but definitely, definitely, definitely don't um, apply for all the jobs that, that the, the, organ the organization is pushing out. So I would say that those are my approach approaches in, uh, in what not to do in getting the attention. Now, what you can do is, um, your LinkedIn profile. So it's people don't know the value of LinkedIn. I, for one as well, didn't know the value of LinkedIn until someone called me on LinkedIn and I got a job from there, even without me, um, you know, putting as much um, value as I am now. So I would say your LinkedIn profile is definitely what you can do to get their attention. Um, and I've already talked about what you can do and how you can boost your LinkedIn profile. Fantastic, fantastic. You know, it's it's so when like baby, when I'm speaking, like when when we're, when I'm listening to you, rather, uh, something things always come up in my mind. You know, things always come up in my mind. There there was this trend on Twitter. Uh, I don't know, maybe a couple of months back. You know, and um, a guy went for an interview, and he just maybe I don't know whether they were just starting the interview or something, and then he told the interviewer or the recruiter that ah you smell nice you smell nice you know yes, and <laughs> it was a serious problem oh. <laughs> it was a serious problem i from, remember that honestly it was the a internet problem. went wild i mean it, it, it went yeah. bonkers it went bonkers and people giving different just quickly maybe like 20 seconds or so like okay. i mean what do you think what would you make of that so i come for an interview and i tell you ah give me a smell nice you know or maybe i don't know your name but i just Maybe to start off the interview, I say, "Ah, you smell nice." What would you? What would be your <laughs> reply? Well, am I? Wait, am I? Am I hired or fired? Well, or fired? <laughs> Do I even have well, a chance? You know, it, it's a combination of different things. You know, as a person, if someone tells me I smell nice, I see it as a compliment. You know, however, I would always say just err on the side of caution. As a job seeker, you don't want to be making those kind of comments. Because number one, you don't know the person, you know, the personal, or I mean, you don't even know the person. This is probably the first time. So yes, if if anyone says it to me, be me, you know, I would take it as a compliment. But you don't know how someone else would take it. So I would just say, desist from those kind of comments. If you're looking for an icebreaker, <laughs> um, you can you talk about the weather. I'll just say something, you know, that that is not that doesn't talk about my, me as a person. So I would just say, you know, don't, don't make such comments. You don't know 
how the person would take it. And you know, we're in Africa, as much as we like it, as much as we try to, you know, westernize our processes and everything, we're still Africans. And so, you know, the culture bit also comes into play. You don't want to offend or rob someone of the wrong way. You know, I'm, I may come from a tribe where, you know, that kind of comment is, is an offense. Meanwhile, I, you know, I could also be from a tribe where it's a compliment. So it's just good to just balance things out and don't, don't make, you know, when you go for an interview, don't make um, such comments as regards the person that is interviewing you. That's Thank you very advice. much. I will err on the side of caution. I won't, I won't say that you're smelling nice, so that's fine. Okay, so um, we have some questions from our viewers here. Um, Bimi, I don't know, I would like to read some of those questions for you so that you can give us your expert opinion on some of these questions, right? So, Olainka Shomuiwa is saying, what are the hot demand skills post-COVID? What are the hot demand skills post-COVID? Bimi, if you could just quickly give us maybe some one or two skills that could benefit Olainka on this. Hello, Bimi, I think you're mute. I think you're mute. Pardon me. Okay, I had talked about some skills like teamwork, some skills like communication, some skills like um, um, some soft skills. So now you're not going to get more of um, physical work. Um, if you do, it's going to be reduced because COVID has shown all organizations that working from home can work, you know. Um, so you want to upgrade your soft skills, skills, interpersonal relationship skills, skills on how to relate with people in order to get your job done, skills, and I would just call them soft skills, really. So you definitely want to, um, if possible, take up courses, because some of these things, you know, it's not really taught in schools, if you know what I mean. Um, so you may also want to just brush up on those skills, definitely communication. Like I said, you may be working in an organization in Mumbai, you know, in India, and you are in Nigeria. So you want to be able to communicate effectively with, um, you know, your team members or your superiors, you know. So um, also, with, also with regards to communication, supervisors also, I would always recommend that they, they know how to communicate. And in communicating, they need to tell their direct reports what they expect, um, when they expect it, and how they expect it. Because that would um, reduce any number of back and forth, you know, within the team. So I would just wrap up and say that those, those are the hot skills in demand that I think people should have post COVID. Fantastic. You're very big on communication. I, I also think it's a, it's an important skill. It's an important skill. So we have another question here from Olagoke Olawale. Olawale. Um, sorry. I hope I didn't, um, over, I didn't, I hope. Olagoke I Olawale. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, so um, he's saying, or she's saying, as a young graduate during this pandemic, how do I handle issues of work experience? Every recruiter wants persons with two to 10 years experience. They are now, there are limited spaces for internships. So I think he basically just wants to know how he can handle when they ask him, how many years of experience do you have? As a fresh graduate, how can he handle? So if we have some tips for Olagoke, Okay, um, so yes, most organizations, they are looking for people that would help push, you know, first of all, they would want people that would help push their, their agenda or push their strategy. And most times you find that the people who can do that are people who are experienced and have done so in other organizations, which is why they would say they want maybe someone with two to 10 years or, well, you know, a certain number of years experience. Um, so, for fresh graduates, for people who are fresh out of school, there are, there are different um, strategies that they can adopt. Um, they can you know, offer their services free of charge. I know it may be difficult, but it's a step in the door. You know, it's a foot, it gives you a foot in the, in, the, in the organization. And so you can, when you get in there, even though they are not paying you, they're paying you a stipend, you then are able to show them what you are worth or what you're made of. And that would, you know, when they see that, oh, this person is adding value. Nobody wants to lose a hand who is really adding value. You know, they can then say, okay, maybe this person can. So that's one strategy that you can take. Another strategy is to intern. Yes, you say that there are limited spaces in internship, but you can also um, offer um, internship services and say, okay, you want to learn from 
So by so doing, you know, these little, little, they, they're all, they're all, they all add up to your years of experience. At the end of the day, you might find out that by doing this six months here, six months there, you already have two years work experience. So I would say that that's, uh, it's, a, it's a creative way of you um, um, putting on your CV that you do have this experience and also being able to back, back it up with, you know, walk the walk and not just the talk. You're able to show that okay, I can do a lot more when you finally get into the organization. Fantastic. I think um, I think um, we have some value added to Olagoke in that respect. So we have another question here from one of our viewers. So Omolara Odukoya says, do you think remote work is here to stay? So it's a simple yes or no question, but you can just give a little reason why you think so, you know. Okay. Um, I think it's here to stay. I think it's here to stay. And, you know, it was a bit difficult for organizations, especially here in Nigeria. And I understand that the same issue was, you know, around the world as well. Um, but now COVID has forced us to sort of accept that, you know, working from home, it can work. Um, it has forced us to put things in place, the, the needed technology, the needed resources, to ensure that people are able to work from home. And we've seen that we were at home for over five months and, you know, what was being done. And yes, there were some teething issues, but it, it was, you know, the work was being done. So I would say that, yes, yes, yes. Um, working from home is here to stay. And I would say it is here to stay for discerning organizations who, who, who are forward thinking and can, and have realized that, you know, in order to even, you know, hold down, you know, the workforce, they need to be able to be flexible and offer some form of working from home. So most of you know, the workforce is um, comprised by millennials who they want their flexibility. They want their own level of control over their time. And so they want to be able to say, I want, I want to work from, even if it's just one or two days, I want to be able to work from. So if, if organizations want to hold on to that segment of the workforce, um, they would definitely have to consider working from home policies. All right, thank you, thank you very much. So yeah, work from home, definitely, definitely here to stay, um, Omolara. So um, we also have a question as well from Fola O. So he's saying, or she's saying, how do I determine what is fair pay for my skills? So after we've come for the interview and we've said you smell nice, how do, when you ask me back now, what do you want to be what paid? Do How do I determine that? Okay, so it's a function of it's a function of different things. Now, um, several several interviews where that question is being asked: What are your expectations as regards remuneration? You find some people saying, "Oh, the company already has their structure. I, I don't know what anything the company says." And then I would jokingly say, "Okay, so if I offer you twenty thousand naira, will you take it?" You know. So I would. I would say that um, everyone should have at the back of their mind how much they are expecting. Now, it's a function of, like I said, it's a function of different things. It's a function of how much you currently are earning. Um, then you can say, oh, I expect a 50% increase. I expect a 30% increase. I expect a 70% increase, up to you. Um, it's also a function of, okay, how long have I stayed where I am? If you've stayed in an organization for perhaps like seven years or so, and you were not really promoted within the, that period. So you would, you would have a higher um, expectation in terms of remuneration when you go for an interview. So it's a function of different things. It's also a function of the demand. It's a function of your um, qualifications and how, how much um, certifications you have which shows how well um, you know, mastered you are for that role. So it depends on so many things, but you know, I would just say, have at the back of your mind, when you go for an interview, there's always, and these things are usually negotiable. So if, even if you give a price that um, is above the company's budget, um, it can always be negotiated, but just don't go to an interview and not have at the back of your mind how much you want to, it's like a wife and a husband. If the husband gives the wife a blank check and says, well, how much do you want? I'm sure 
everybody will jump on that and say how much they really want to. <laughs> <laughs> that that story will end very interestingly. It will end. It will end quite interestingly. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, have what you you hope to end at the back of your mind. It's an excellent takeaway. So let's quickly get down to some more questions. Don't forget as well, we are social on Facebook and LinkedIn, United Capital PLC. So you can get to us on Facebook and LinkedIn, United Capital PLC. We are also on YouTube right now with you. So feel free to subscribe, the bell icon, and we'll be very grateful for that. Instagram as well, at United Capital PLC for Instagram. You can follow us there. And then on Twitter, at United Cap, at United Cap, as in face cap, right? So um, if it's not verified, it's not us. So please take notes as you follow, like, and subscribe. So, Bimi, we have just a couple of questions here. Okay. And um, I think we'll take them quickly. As a HR consultant, what are the things you look out for in a resume? Okay. Um, so, first off, I want to see your experience. You know, the back to the topic of experience. I want to see what you've done and how relevant it is to the role you are applying for. Um, so if, you are, if there's a, a job vacancy for a, an account executive, I don't want to see someone with HR experience because it may, I mean, it just doesn't jive, especially if it's, if it's a, an experienced higher role, you know, but if it's a, a, an entry role, then that's not a problem. Um, I would also want to look at your educational, um, um, background. I want to see when you graduated, um, if you've done any certifications after that, or if you've just sat down and you didn't get any other, so you didn't develop yourself, you know, within the period. So someone who finished in 2010 and as at 2020 has not done any certifications or any, you know, done anything extra. That shows that the person is not um, big on personal development. And really in organizations, Yes, organizations are made up of human beings, you know, so we want people who take their own personal development um, um, strongly because they will take the development of the organization strongly. It just kind of works that way. Um, also, I may want to look out for your email and your contact details. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, that's fine. That's fine. So um, relevant experience in a nutshell, and then of course the contacts, which um, we always have to have there. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, let's go to another question. Do personal qualities play any role in securing employment? So the person's personal qualities, would you say it plays a, a definitive role, if you like, in the candidate securing employment? Um, yes, it's, it's you know, it, it kind of reminds me of, you know, when you're applying for school, probably in the US or something, they want to see that you have a personality, you have something else that you're offering. So yes, in organizations, we want to see that you have a life outside work. Um, so you, you may want to include that in your CV, include your hobbies, maybe just a couple of them. Um, and also probably during interviews, when they ask you um, to introduce yourself. You know, when you're being asked at an interview to introduce yourself, we're not asking you where you are from. We don't want to hear you're from Ocean State with two sisters and a brother. We want to hear about your, um, your experience, your education, and also your personal attributes to see how well you fit into the culture of the organization. So for instance, um, an organization may have a football club where they, you know, they meet, they practice, and they play against other companies. So yes, during the interview, you, you may want to highlight that. After talking about the relevant things, you just chip in that, oh, um, part of your hobbies, you, you play football, or you're very good at your quarterback, or I'm not really good with football. You know, so you may want to highlight that and just mention that, because it, would def it, would, it may help. You never know, depending on what the recruiters are looking out for. Or if you're good at organizing events, um, you may just want to chip that in to, you know, so that you see that, okay, this, this is a skill that we can use outside the person's day-to-day -day job. So yes, yeah, your personal attributes, I would say it's, 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 it's definitely important to highlight it. 
Right, fantastic. So, in fact, two important things that I think that job seekers should take note of when they are um, getting their CVs in place. After getting your the relevant experience, um, after getting your professional qualifications, your hobbies, super important. Do I play football, tennis, volleyball? I play volleyball. I like volleyball. You know, I hear that sometimes it's stereotyped to be a girl's game, but I don't care. I sweat when I play it. I'm fine, right? And then also your phone number. <laughs> Baby cannot, she has told you almost four times, your phone <laughs> number for goodness An sake. An email address. An email. <laughs> uh, know, sorry, so. let me just chip in here, Louis. Mm-hmm. So emails like foreversexy.gmail.com at gmail.com or, you know, all those funny, funny emails, they will not help you, really. <laughs> so you may just want to stick to your first name and probably your surname or something else that, that's not as uh, <laughs> suggestive as those emails. So I just wanted to chip that in. Okay, thank you very much. I'm, I'm also writing it down. So no forever sexy in um, email addresses. That's super important point. Thank you so much. Okay, so, um, Bimi, how important will you say references from previous employees are in the recruitment process so references from the job that you last worked at or that you have worked at in the past how important will you say the references are when you're um, recruiting okay um so almost every organization i know um they do some checks Now, these checks are to sort of provide additional information as well as protect the organization. So some of these checks include your educational background, maybe to confirm your your certifications and all that. One of these checks is your reference, um, reference from previous employer. Now, it's very, very important. It's actually very important because it gives the employer um, an additional information about you who, you know, with, and you may have come into the system, yes, but you remember you have six months uh, predict probationary period where anything can happen. So the, the, the um, reference from previous employer is very important. You don't want to burn bridges for people who have worked before. You really don't want to burn your bridges because you will need them, um, uh, you know, and I always say that things can be settled amicably by both parties without it escalating to um, on, on resolved levels. So it's very important. It gives the employer an um, additional information about the employee. Um, it also shows it, it, the, the culture fit of the person. So you don't want to get a reference back from a previous employer that says, oh, this person could not work with teams, or this person found it difficult to take um, instructions or to take, uh, or was in, was an, it was very, the, I mean, this person was labeled as a rebel. You know, you, those kind of comments, you really don't want them in your new place of work because it doesn't paint you in a very good light. Um, so yes, I would say that they're actually very important. Um, you shouldn't burn our bridges as much as possible. Still try to keep in touch with our employers. And in instances where you, you, I mean, you don't have to keep in touch, but just don't burn the bridges such that when, um, um, when requests are made, they would respond favorably. Thank you so very much. So let the bridges stay up. Let's not burn the bridges. Um, very quickly now, because we are um, a bit short of time, let's take this interesting question from Esther. So Esther Adeje, she says, good afternoon. Please, how can I get a lecturing job with little experience as they are quite limited? And how can I fit into the corporate world with my focus on lecturing? And um, she's laughing out loud. So um, <laughs> let's... <laughs> Okay, so I think I'll just take one one aspect of that. (laughs) Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, so she says, how can she get a lecturing job? So with no experience, you're fresh out of school, but you have a flair for teaching. Um, So it depends on the subject. So for instance, I know there are quite a number of schools, I won't call them schools, but institutions that um, provide um, teaching services. So so for someone who is writing a professional exam, like, like ACC, for example, there are different institutions that um, that um, people go to to get taught, you know, the syllabus and everything. So you can go, walk up to any of those places and offer your services. Like I said, you, you may not start out um, with a bang. You may not start out getting as much, especially when, you know, so you don't get frustrated if you've been sitting at home for quite a while. 
you know, and you just need, you, these days you just need to think out of the box. You can walk up to any of these, um, do your research um, and contact them and say, okay, you are, you know, you're a, an enthusiastic lecturer or teacher and you want to further harness your skills in social so and so area um, and that you're willing to, you know, provide your services. In fact, you can even go there, just look for creative ways and just get in there. And by the time when you do that for a couple of months, one year, you find that, okay, you may even be in high demand because, you know, one thing is people, people are watching. People are watching you when you're working. People are looking, they're observing. They say, oh, I like the way this person works. So if you are adding value, and these days we don't want people who, oh, it's not in my job description. It's only what is in my job description that I'm doing or that I'm going to do. No, 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 none of that. People want people who can add value. So once you get into an organization and you're able to add value, then you know you'll be in demand. You people will actually be like, okay, you know, and there's nothing that spreads as wide as word of mouth. Um, so I would say yes, if you do want a lecturing job or you want a teaching job, just do your research, get a list of um, schools or um, what do you call them, um, institutions or you know organizations that offer these services, depending on the subject you want to teach, do your research, have a list, and then contact them, have a to-do list and tick, as you're contacting them, you're ticking. If you have like a list of five, six, seven, at least one would come would, would come through. So that's what, that's the advice I'll give to Esther. All right, thank you very much. Esther, so that's it too. Um, you have to, you have to be innovative. You know, it's post COVID post-COVID strategies that we're talking about here. So a bit of um, a bit of innovation would definitely help. Bimi, thank you so much. This has been this has been a value laden session. I am I am overpouring with value right now as I am right here. You know, thank you so very much. And I know that a lot of people will feel the same way. They may want to maybe contact you personally and get a bit more of this excellent value. So if you could just drop some of your contact details for us so that we can know how to get across to you, you know, after this session. Okay. Um, so my email address is bemisola.adineko at unitedcapitalplcgroup.com. It's a mouthful. bemisola.adineko at unitedcapitalplcgroup.com. So um, you can always send me an email. Um, thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So um, thank you so much for joining this very exciting, enlightening um, episode of Chit Chatting with UCAP. Um, if you're watching us right now, you could subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have more sessions coming up, value-packed, super interesting sessions coming up um, in coming weeks. And then you could also follow us on social. We're social on Instagram. We are United Capital PLC. So at United Capital PLC on Instagram. Um, on Facebook and LinkedIn, we are United Capital PLC as well. And on Twitter, we are United Cap. So at United Cap. Uh, always check for the verification sign. Please, please check for the verification sign. Um, we, our accounts are verified. And also beware of scammers. These days, the lengths that these people will go to, right? So beware of scammers. We do not multiply your investments in 45 minutes. Or double, Very double, double, double. We are highly, highly regulated. We do not, we are no money doublers, okay? So please, when getting information from the internet, be careful, use our verified links and you will get the results that you're looking for. Bimi, thank you so, so very much. I enjoyed the conversation. Mm, you're shining. I said that at the beginning. Thank you, Louis. Shining. Thank you so much. It's, a, it's been a pleasure. I actually, enjoy, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. And I'm sure the viewers enjoyed it as well. I hope so, so too. up until the next time of chit chatting with United Cap, we say thank you very much. Goodbye and thank Godspeed. You. Bye.